Okay, uh, I'm gonna make a little video, um, probably the first of a number of videos discussing ways in which I, in a very inexpensive way using simple materials, um, build dioramas, rock exposures as an example, uh, prehistoric animals and that kind of thing for uh, museum displays. And um, so I, I'm a curator of a small collegiate museum where basically there's no staff other than me and uh, we don't um, have the kind of budget to hire uh, design firms to come in and make make our um, dioramas and our dioramas and our interpretive displays and that kind of thing. And so the techniques that I've used are basically just what I came up with on my own. Um, there may be better ways. Um, I'm not in the business of you know trying to profit off of YouTube or anything like that. So you know you may find better ways, but uh, I thought it would be useful to share what I've done, maybe give some other people some ideas to be able to uh, make displays, whether it's a diorama for a classroom, for a small college museum, for a county museum, something like that, where budget issues are such that you know you can't, you don't have the capability of going and hiring a design firm and and need to do such things yourself. So the first, this first video is going to be about making easy, inexpensive, artificial rock exposures for uh, museum displays and dioramas. Um, and um, so you get an idea of where, why I'm doing it in this um, preliminary uh, photo of the display that I'm working on, where basically I wanna have representative rock exposures um, in my diorama, uh, coupled with sort of a, a depiction of what life would have been like in this area at the time that the rocks were being deposited. And uh, I'm gonna, uh, and I've created some shelves here on the rock exposure so I can actually put some fossils on there, representing some of the life that you see in the scene. So the materials include um, styrofoam insulating board, uh, a razor knife or an X-Acto knife, a hot glue gun and associated glue sticks, uh, foam core poster board, uh, white glue, plaster of Paris, a large knife for creating texture of the strata. In this case, I'm going to be reproducing shale. So we're going to have very fine strata and bedding planes, uh, acrylic, cheap acrylic paint and spray paint. So um, the first thing that you need to do is determine the size, the dimensions of the rock outcrop that you want to make. So mine is fitting in a part of a display case. So it's a little over three feet wide, uh, a little over two feet tall. Um, and I'm not, and I'm the depth, I'm not uh, occupying the entire depth of the display case, just part of it. So I've got my dimensions figured out. And what I've done is I've taken some styrofoam insulating board, and I have uh, cut up uh, different widths. So I've got some two inch widths and some three inch widths. And, I, and I've staggered those so that you get an, an uneven um, exposure. And, you know, different, different uh, groups of strata may, may erode in different ways. And so you're gonna have very um, uneven exposure like you might see in nature. And so I glued those together then with a hot glue gun. And I also then took this entire apparatus and I put a, a piece of foam core, uh, glued it to the back side. So I laid the fo foam core down on the table and then applied glue uh, to, to the, uh, the back side of this and glued it to that. Now, when I did that, because I staggered these, and you might find a better way to do it, but I staggered them. There's going to be gaps here between the some of the styrofoam layers and the foam core. And because this edge of the rock exposure is going to be shown to the public, 
uh, and going to be covered with plaster and texture. I filled all those gaps between the foam core and the styrofoam with scraps of styrofoam so that I didn't have to worry about filling those holes with plaster. Uh, saves plaster that way. But anyway, uh, glue this apparatus to a piece of foam core of the same dimensions. And in my case, I wanted some ledges primarily for the reason of, of creating little shelves where I could put fossils and have labeled fossils on my rock outcrop. So I cut out some more styrofoam pieces, kind of layered those on there, and again, glued those with the hot glue gun. Um, the other thing is that, you know, when you first stack these things, you're going to have very angular edges. Okay, and so on a natural rock outcrop, that might not look, uh, that might not, that might look too, a little too artificial. So I took an X-Acto knife and kind of softened the edges of some of these things. And I did so eventually here on this corner too, just so it doesn't look quite so geometric. Um, the next step was then to start applying plaster. And so you want to mix up you, you, the best thing with plaster is mix it up in small, small uh, quantities because it, it will begin to set up as soon as you mix it. And you don't want to mix a huge batch and then find halfway through applying it, the rest of your batch is already hardened. So start small, get an idea of how much you can work with before it starts hardening. But you mix up the plaster Paris and you want it to have it, you don't want to have it really runny because you're gonna be scoring this to create the strata. And if it's too runny, it's just gonna to glob together. If you make it too thick, when you score it with your knife, you're gonna be dragging the plaster and it's not, not gonna look very good. And at the same time, if it's too thick, it's gonna set up really fast and it won't give you enough time to finish your texture. So, you know, I like a consistency sort of about maybe like molasses, not molasses in January, but not molasses in July either, somewhere in between. So I apply the plaster with a spoon or a butter knife or putty knife uh, to my structure. I started with the shelves, but you could start at the bottom and just start working your way up. And you're gonna find maybe some cracks in between the foam layers. Uh, you'll wanna fill those with plaster. If some of them show through, that's fine because it might look like a natural crack in the lock, rock layer, but you don't want consistent gaps or cracks for every single piece of styrofoam because that's gonna look unnatural. So in this case, I'm replicating a thinly bedded shale, Devonian shale. And so that's gonna dictate the kind of texture I want. Now, if I was doing like dolomite or something like that, it would be very blocky and there might be more angular smooth faces without much evidence of, of, of strata or bedding. So um, in this case, I used a basically a large kitchen knife and I would, have a combination of dragging the knife in a horizontal fashion um, uh, across the plaster or in some cases tapping it with the knife and basically you just want to get an idea of very thin layers of shale um, and you can kind of keep working on this especially if your plaster is a little too runny you may have to let it set up a little bit before you have the right consistency to make the layering that you want but you just keep working at it while the uh, plaster is still workable until you get the effect that you want. So here is the, the completed uh, plaster application. And um, once that's set up and dry, then, then we can start applying a base coat of paint. And so rather than spray paint it, I use um, acrylic paints with a brush. The main reason is because you're gonna have, it's a very rough, surface and it's going to be you're going to be using a lot of spray paint even then it might not get down into all the, the little uh, cracks and fissures and so on so i i buy this cheap acrylic paint from walmart this apple barrel brand uh, matte colored and i add a little water you know put some into a bowl and add a little water because i want it a little bit runny so it gets down into all the cracks i don't want to see any white plaster showing through that's going to be that's not gonna look very natural. So I get about a one inch brush and I start slathering that paint on there, making sure I get down into all the cracks, double checking it uh, as it dries to make sure there's not any white exposed. 
And so that's my base coat because I'm replicating, you know, basically what would be a, the, the silica shale formation, a don donian shale formation. I picked a kind of a mid-tone gray that would be sort of similar to that rock formation. Then you can start adding some variability and some some value, some shading. And uh, for this, I use spray paint. And I use matte colored spray paint. And sometimes you can use primer if you can't get the paint in the right shade of gray that you want. But at a distance, you don't want to get up close, you know, no closer than about a foot. You're just going to kind of want the kind of, it's almost like a, uh, uh, what do they call that? A um, airbrush technique. You don't want any globs of paint or big patches of paint. You just kind of want to come at a distance and from an oblique angle, just to add a little shadow or value to these tiny strata in here. So I might come from both directions with a dark, and then I may do some light. And the old adage is that darks, uh, lights come forward and darks fall back. So you can do some, um, uh, artificial shadowing by maybe, you know, in a place like this, you might have a little heavier on the dark. And then these, these uh, ledges, these uh, the edges of the ledges, maybe you hit it with some of the lighter gray. Um, you may have some layers, like maybe this big layer here, maybe you have a little bit darker, um, just to show variability between the, the various uh, members within the, within the formation. And so, um, that gives it a little bit more natural look by providing variability and in, in, in value and in uh, shadows and highlights and that kind of thing. So um, this display is still in progress, but I've got a little video here to show you kind of uh, what the exposures look like. I haven't put the fossils on the shelves or anything like that, but how the exposures look in the diorama that I'm building. So uh, obviously, if you're going to do sandstone or if you're going to do uh, dolostone or uh, limestone, you know, the texture is going to be different. You're just going to need to get samples or photos of the outcrop that you're trying to mimic and then texture it accordingly. Uh, for sandstone, for instance, you can get ready mix grout and you can even get it in, in the color that you want. You can get sandstone colored. And you can and you can apply that with a palette knife, and 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 have that instant sandstone texture without having to mimic the texture uh, uh, with with a brush or something like that. Um, and then I'm going to be so then I'm going to be showing you. I have some videos showing you how I make these models. Of you know, it's not like you can just go into Walmart and buy an obscure shark species from the Devonian. And sometimes you can online. Uh, rarely, if it's being on the obscurity of the organism, you can get trilobite models and things like that. But those are ungodly expensive. And so um, for a small museum or a school or something, if you, if you want to build a model, I'll show you how I did it. And uh, you can decide whether that works for you. <laughs> 